since this is a Wednesday evening sitting, <clears throat> as usual, we'll start with the talk. Mondays and Fridays, as you already know, are started with a meta a loving kindness meditation. <clears throat> The most important thing about practice and life, actually, as well, is awareness, attention, being present in every moment of our life. This is something that we grow away from. It's very rare that anybody, even, even in middle school has the degree of awareness and attention and presence in, in daily life that they started out with as a child. <clears throat> when we're very small children, unless we've uh, unwittingly entered into a family or an environment that is traumatic, we are amazed at the adventure or the fascination of learning how to navigate this new world that we found ourselves in. It's a, it's a period of deep exploration and, and totally present exploration. In fact, it's not, uh, it's assumed, actually I think it's figured out somehow scientifically, I'm not quite sure how, that a child does not even differentiate between himself or herself in the environment until they're at least 15 to 18 months old. Before that, everything is one. There's no boundaries. There's no, no differences between uh, this and the floor that it touches or whatever it puts in its mouth and itself. <clears throat> but as Time goes on, and this is an important differentiation that needs to happen. Babies, children, toddlers begin to realize that there's me and there's everything else, or at least there's me and there's main caregiver. And gradually we have experiences, increasingly so as we grow older, that lead us to conclude certain things about ourselves. And some of those conclusions, particularly if we've had difficult or painful experiences, are to um, separate ourselves from the moment as it is, from being truly present, because it's too poten potentially painful to be there. We hide behind thoughts, we daydream, we space out, or in other ways, we, we escape from the moment, which can have a beneficial effect if there's trauma involved. But the upshot of it is that as we go along gathering more moss, as if you want to call it that, uh, and becoming increasingly invested in a story, then we miss out on the present moment and the miraculous, amazing experience that that provides. So, for those of us who've had a traumatic uh, experience or more, maybe even a traumatic upbringing, it's important to work with somebody professional to ease those condition reflexes, to dare to tiptoe out of our uh, castle and, and be present in the moment. Otherwise, we are going to be living in a, well, there's an interesting cartoon in one of the recent New Yorker magazines. <clears throat> it doesn't have a caption yet. It's one of those cartoons that you're supposed to provide a caption for, and then eventually they'll uh, 
uh, figure out which caption is the best of all those submitted, and, and that one will get the, the uh, cartoon. But there is a, obviously it's in the kitchen somewhere in somebody's house, and I think it's the guy is standing there at the sink washing dishes, and he turns around, and there's somebody else, conceivably his wife, uh, standing there in a suit of armor. I have no idea what the, the um, title of that could be or what the cut line would be of that cartoon. We'll have to wait and find out how people see it. But in a certain way, that's how we live our lives. If we are not able to or not willing to or out of the habit of being truly present with our life. To be able to be truly present, even in one moment of our life, is absolutely amazing. Moreover, for those of us who are dedicated to Zen practice, it is impossible to come to awakening without at least one moment of being so totally present that who you think you are, the whole story, the assumptions, the ideas, even the sense of being somebody at all disappears. And it's only there, within that absolute presence, that awakening take, can take place. Because before that, there's a, there's a high and thick wall between that absolute awakening and the I mean my story. It's kind of interesting. There's um, the biblical story of the Tower of Babel, where um, I don't remember exactly, it's been a long time since I studied the Bible, but uh, people were in conversation in such a, a way that they were trying to build the tower to God. And in a certain way, as we are removing ourselves from presence through our thoughts, our ideas, our stories, our assumptions, our conditioning, uh, we're doing the same thing. We're trying to build a tower to God, but it's not going to happen. Because God, awakening, Buddha nature, your true self, isn't somewhere else. It's right here now. It can't be anywhere else. And so to find it requires presence to right here now. It seems like this is the most difficult thing for people of practice. We learn how to practice. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> we learn how to practice, and we practice practicing, and that's important. Each time we extend that out breath, each time we allow ourselves the full present awareness of sound, of the subtle sensations in our body, of any of the other ways that we can use to return to our fundamental awareness of awareness. It begins to thin out that veil, that huge wall, whatever you want to call it, that stands in our way between presence and where we otherwise would be. There's a resistance often to doing this. There are very, very few people that I know at least who would say, I love doing Zazen. In fact, I know one person, happens to be another Zen teacher, and I, always was kind of amazed at that because 
uh, for me, doing Zazen was an, always an enormous challenge. Well, an enormous challenge, except the moments when I would forget myself. And maybe that's a clue. Dogen said, to study the way, in other words, to practice Zen, is to study the self. And to study the self is to open, he didn't say it exactly this way, but this is what was meant, is to open to all the nuances of the experience of presence. How he said it was to study the way is to study the self. To study the self is to forget the self. We cannot forget the self unless we are so present that there's nobody there to forget any self. And he continued on. To forget the self is to become enlightened by the 10,000 things. To become enlightened by the 10,000 things is to remove the barrier between self and other. So it boils down to presence. Our practice is really about presence. And as we enter into that more and more deeply, it's amazing how our life will change, how we will find moments of, of joy, of gratitude, of ease. I'm sure there's other stuff as well. But the joy, gratitude, and ease begins to predominate. And as that continues on, how can we not be happy? And we take it all the way down to the bottom. We can't, as Hawking said, you can't fail to attain awakening any more than you can fail to hit the ground when you stamp your foot. So this practice is about re-embodying that original presence that we came into this life with. And it does take courage, particularly if we've had any difficult experiences, any painful experiences, who wants to go back and visit those? And yet we almost feel like there's, there's some kind of a shadow over us that maybe it'll happen again. Maybe I'll be in pain again. Maybe this pain will never leave me. Trust that if you walk bravely in and allow yourself to feel fully the experience in your body of each moment, just as it is. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. But to offer it radical acceptance, okay, this is how it, it appears to be. I'm up in my hands and accept it. Doing that, you'll go a long way to freedom. And now that this COVID-19 pandemic is so uh, in our face and people are dying and people are losing jobs and people are starving and, and still wars are going on and there's insanity everywhere. Anxiety is the name of the game these days. So what an incredible opportunity to dive into that anxiety. What does it feel like? What color is it? What does it taste like? Is it heavy? Is it light? Explore it. Become 
intimately aware of the full experience of that anxiety. And it's amazing what can come forth from that. A value in the whole rest of your life, no matter how long or how short it is. So again, the bottom line is presence. Real presence. True presence. Where there's nothing standing in the way, no sentence, no idea, no story, no thought between this moment and reality. So let's get about deepening it. Thank you.